Hello everyone, welcome to episode 2 in my series, A Beginner's Guide to Procedural Generation. Last episode, we explored what procedural generation is, and we created procedurally placed cubes. This episode, we will be looking into displacing the cubes by using Perlin noise. Before we dive into the code, let's explore and understand what Perlin noise is. What is Perlin noise? Perlin noise is a pseudo-random pattern of float values generated across a 2D plane, although the technique does generalize to three or more dimensions. The noise does not contain a completely random value at each point, but rather consists of waves whose values gradually increase and decrease across the pattern. The picture you see on screen now is how we typically visualize Perlin noise as a texture. If you're wondering in which games Perlin Noise are used, one of the most famous ones is Minecraft. The world generation uses Perlin Noise to displace the cubes. To keep this episode simple and easy to follow, we will not be implementing our own version of Perlin Noise, but rather using Unity's inbuilt function mathf.perlinnoise. Now that we have a better understanding as to what Perlin Noise is, let's jump into the code. Now that we're back in the generate grid script, we can actually go about implementing Perlin noise to offset our y axes. The first thing that we're going to want to do is to create a new method that returns of type float that will contain our Perlin noise. Here we have a method called generate noise that takes in x, z, and the detail scale as its parameters. Inside this method, we go about creating two new variables called x noise and z noise. For our x noise, we're going to be passing in the variable x, plusing it by this game object's transform.position.x axis divided by our detail scale. We then do the same for the z noise, however, instead of getting the z axis, we get the y axis of this transform. Dot position. We then return mathf.perlin noise taking in our x noise and our z noise. Now that we have our noise being generated, what we need to do is actually implement this. So let's go back up to our vector 3 pause and implement it under our y axis. Now, if we go about running this code, this will generate. However, there are a few things that I'd like to change and add to our code to make the world look better. Let's start off by creating an integer noise height and assigning it the value of 3. While we're up here, let's change our grid offset from an int to a float. We will also change its value to 1.1f. Now that we have defined our noise height, Let's actually implement that in our y axis of pause. Let's take a closer look as to what we're actually doing here. In our pause, we're passing in the method that we just created called generate noise. We're passing in the x variable and the z variable plus our detail scale. Now within this function, we are able to utilize these variables by passing them in as parameters. As we can see here, we're calling on the x and z plus our detail scale. We then tell mathf.perlinnoise to compute the Perlin noise based on these two floats that we have defined. Now in Unity, if we go and play our scene, we will see that we are now generating a grid that is being displaced by Perlin noise. We can also go ahead and increase the size to see how this will affect our noise. Back in our generate grid script, let's increase the world size to 40 by 40. Let's also amend our noise height to 5. Let's save and go back into Unity. Now back in Unity, once we play our game, this is what we're greeted with. We can easily amend what our noise does by changing these values here so please do have a play around and see what you come up with. Thank you very much for joining me on episode 2 of my beginner's guide to procedural generation. 
I hope that this episode shared some insight into what Perlin Noise is and how to implement it within Unity. If you would like to do some further reading, I have included some resources in the description below. For our next episode, we will be looking at spawning objects onto our grid.